Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is going to be absolutely bonkers and it is going to be live. Uh, so thank you for joining me this morning, y'all. I hope you like these morning lives. I don't know if I'm going to continue them. I would like to. I just want to make sure that it's worth it for you guys uh, to get your news in the morning. So let me quickly go over you know, what we're going to talk about today. And then I'm going to place some bets against some of the subscribers as well that I have here. But let me show you, uh, you know, what we're going to look at today. So we're going to look at, uh, obviously, y'all, open door, you know, laying off additional workers, kind of just looking at open door, the health of open door. So we'll look at that article. Uh, and then shortly after that article, we're going to go here and we're going to really analyze the likelihood that open door actually goes into a bankruptcy uh, because uh, <laughs> they're not doing too good. Obviously, open door is a flip uh, investment company. So, you know, one of my question is, is what happens when they sell all the houses that they own? Then what? <laughs> they're, they're in business to purchase property. And then after that, y'all, we're going to go and listen to Kathy Woods. And I know a lot of people like, oh, don't listen to her. Don't listen to her, whatever. Um, but we're going to briefly listen to her because, you know, she, she has some interesting things to say. All right. Let me just say that she has some very interesting things to say. Now, also what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what a potential pivot could look like and why it actually may be a lot smarter than you think to wait to purchase real estate until after the pivot and after rates go down. And the way I'm going to do that, y'all, is I'm going to pull up a mortgage calculator and really kind of just go in to, you know, what it could possibly look like as far as mortgage rates, what they could possibly look like once the Federal Reserve does pivot. So we're actually going to look at, you know, what payments for mortgages could possibly get to in the future. The reason I want to do that is, is just to remind you that it's probably not a good idea to go out and rush buying real estate, especially right now when there's so much dust in the air. So those are some of the things we're going to do, you guys. Uh, and I'm going to take bets here in a second. But what I want to do is I want to show you where the 10 year is. And I'm kind of lucky, y'all. It seems like every time I do a live video, the 10 year goes up. So take a look at the 10 year this morning. The 10 year is up. It was up five basis points. The 10 year is up right now, almost four basis points. A lot of y'all should know that we actually watch the 10 year treasury because it really, you know, closely uh, follows more th uh, mortgage rates, right? So we watch the treasury to get an idea of mortgage rates. You guys may remember me yesterday saying that uh, mortgage rates through Mortgage News Daily should, you know, update to 6.7%. So you guys remember me saying that? You remember me saying that interest rates should update to 6.7% the other day, my last live? Take a look at what they updated to. Look at this. Is this crazy? They updated to 6.7%. I called that. Look at that. So the average rate right now is 6.7%. Now what's going to happen, you guys, is once this updates later today, those rates will probably go down to like 6 point, I'm going to guess like 6.8 to 6.6, and then they're going to go up the next day. How do I know that? I'm watching the 10-year treasury. We don't even have to guess half the time. We just have to watch the 10-year treasury. Now, I'm going to quickly go through all of this, you guys. Uh, let me show you the market real quick, and then we're going to really uh, get started. And I'm going to timestamp everything, but take a look at the market right now. Market is, again, sideways. Everything is down. Uh, VIX is actually up. The volatility index is up. Gold is down, surprisingly. Gold is now under $2,000. Oil is under $80 as well. So that's what's going on in the market. doesn't really have to do per se with real estate, even real estate, real estate, real estate, even though everything is kind of intertwined. Now, before I start this, you guys, I'm going to make my first timestamp. Okay. First timestamp is the bet. Okay. So we're going to do bet right now. I have a bet. I want to place a bet uh, against Johnny, Jeff, Vital. I want to place a bet to you guys, a gentleman's bet. All right. I already talked to Jeff. I already texted Jeff. So I know Jeff's on board, but Johnny, I see you in the comments. Johnny, this is to you. Where's Vital at? Where's my man Vital at? I see Jeff, uh, Vital, where you at? I have a bet I want to make with Vital Signs, uh, Jeff M and Johnny Fly. And the reason I want to make a bet with them is because I love them. They're, they're, they've been subscribers for quite a long time, you guys. I, I, I do care about them. If I got a phone call in the middle of the night, you know, say from like Jeff and he needed help, I would probably help Jeff. If I got it from Johnny, I'd probably just hang up because Johnny just roasts me all the time. But I still love you, Johnny. But here's the bet, all right? And I'm actually going to do this a two for, I'm going to give you guys two things. So the bet is only $1. This is a gentleman's bet, all right? Gentleman's bet. First thing is, and both of these have to come true in order for me to win, all right? So both of these have to come true. Bet number one, all right? Yes, Vital's on there. You guys, look at, here's Vital. Let me show the viewers real quick. There's my man Vital, there's my man Jeff, and there's my man Johnny. So I expect all three of you 
to take me up on this bet. Here's the bet. Number one about inventory. Let me show y'all. Let me pull up this actually like this. Okay. Wait a minute. Okay. There we go. All right. Bet number one, Johnny. Okay. Vital. Jeff, bet number one, this is what I'm saying right now. And we're this chart, Fred, housing inventory. This is active unit count. This is a harder, this is harder to get units on because it's only active, not pending. So this is active. This is my bet to you guys. This is the first thing. I have to have two things go right. Bet number one, I'm saying that this year we will have almost double the inventory that we have right now. This year, I'm betting you guys that we're, that inventory is going to shoot all the way up here and we're going to have a million active units this year. Okay. That's the first thing I have to get two things, right? That's it's hard enough with just that, right? It's hard enough with just that. Y'all know it's hard enough with just that, but that's the first thing I'm saying to you guys, we're going to hit a million active units this year. All right. But that's not all I'm going to, I'm going to ante up. I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I'm also going to bet this. Let me show y'all. By, let me show you guys. Okay, here's well, so what I'm saying. So not only are we going to have a 1 million active units, median sales price, which is this blue line right here, is going to go under 2021 median sales price this year. Okay, so this is what I'm saying. Once again, we're going to have a million active units. You guys saw that here. Okay, so this is going to shoot up eventually. Okay, this year. And I'm also saying that this blue line right here is going to go all the way under that orange line. All right. I'm just saying y'all, so that's the bet. I want you guys to do me a favor. Let me know um, if you can. Let me switch back over here. Okay, so that's the bet. All right, let me know. I wanna see, I wanna see the comments, okay? I wanna see the comments. Vital, Jeff, Johnny, you guys gonna take me up on that bet? $1 bet, all right? $1 bet, and it's something that we can track this year. <sighs> Where where you at, man? Where you at, Vital? I didn't see. Let me know. Are you are you in Vital? Vital's in. Jeff's in. I want to know that Johnny's in because honestly, guys, if I win a dollar from these guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna frame that in the background. I'm gonna and hopefully maybe I'll have a, a thousand a hundred thousand subscribers. I'm gonna put these dollars right next to a hundred thousand subscriber plaque. That's how much I want to win their dollars, y'all. I want to win their dollars so much. Y'all beat me up so much. I can't wait to beat y'all up. Can't wait. Easy bet. Easy bet. Okay. <laughs> Johnny. All right. Everyone's in. Okay. Let's move on to the next thing. So everyone's in. We know that now I'm going to make my next timestamp and we're about to talk about what a fed pivot could possibly do. Okay. So we're going to talk about fed pivot. You guys know, you know, I get a lot of people asking me questions like Travis, when is it the right time to buy? When is it the right time to buy? And, you know, my answer is pretty much universal. That depends on your local housing market. And that depends on you. You need to tell me when it's time for you to buy my job here, at least the way I look at it is, is not to do the thinking for you is not to tell you yes or no, per se, per se, it's to help enlighten people, right? Not individually. I can't give personalized advice, but again, um, here's the thing, but I also say that probably, I'm just going to say, yeah, this, these are the things that, in my opinion, we should wait for if we can. I know there's different reasons to buy, but number one, recession confirms. Number two, spring and summer inventory drop. Inventory is going to skyrocket, y'all. I don't care what anyone's saying, okay? Inventory is about to skyrocket. It already is. It's up 15% in the local market in the last two weeks, okay? So in my local market, it's up 50, over 15%. I rounded down to 15% in about two weeks. So there's no, there's no question inventory is going to skyrocket, but here's the thing. Um, the pivot. All right. I want to talk more about a fed pivot and how that can actually be extremely beneficial to wait for a loan. Because remember when the fed pivots or U-turns, whatever you want to say, more than likely they're going to drop interest rates. So I want to really analyze that and see, well, if we wait for the pivot, does it make sense? And will interest rates go low enough to where it's beneficial? So in order to really understand that y'all let's let me pull up the fed economic data real quick let's see what interest rates were pre-pandemic okay so here's fred you know 30-year fixed rate mortgage average in the united states so i want to show you guys where we're at you know pre-pandemic and i'm going to go a little bit higher here i'll just go up here so right before we went into you know covid the whole covid happened i just want to remind you guys that the average rate was about 3.75 percent I don't think that we should go to 3.5, 3.75% again, but I did want to remind you guys that again, before COVID, before lockdowns, average interest rate, 
3.75%. It says 3.74 right there, but I'm going to take 3.75%. Okay. So just remember that. Now, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use today's rates. Okay. And what we're going to do y'all real quick, let me look at you guys. This is what I'm going to do. We're going to do a calculation workup right now. Okay. We're going to come up with a mortgage payment based on today's interest rates and based on median sales value of 350,000. And then we're gonna do it, I'm gonna show you guys another scenario where if we wait to the Fed pivot, rates go down and say home value goes up 5%. So hypothetically, even if home values go up 5%, because remember all these people are saying, buy now, buy now before equity just keeps going up. So I'm gonna do a calculation with you guys based on a 5% increase in value. So we'll just act like a year. So we're gonna say, 6.7% right now. And then we're going to act like one year from now, that's when the Fed pivot happens, rates go down, even though values go up. Okay. I'm not saying values are going to go up. I'm just saying to get a fair comparison, that's what I'm going to do. Does that make sense to everyone? Let me know that that makes sense to you guys, please. Let me know that that makes sense to you guys. Um, and again, we're going to use, let me pull this up here. So here's what I'm going to do to show you guys this. This is a simple mortgage calculator. This is a very effective tool to use. And I really want to talk about the Fed pivot because, you know, again, it's, it's really important to look at price. Uh, we will save a lot of money, obviously, on price. But if we do this correctly, we will also save a lot of money on interest rate as long as we're not a cash buyer. If you're a cash buyer, none of this matters. I get that. But most people are you know, not cash buyers. Most people are using finances to get their home. So again, right now, let's use a median sales price of $350,000. Today's interest rates are 6.7%. Okay. Follow along with me, guys. That gives us a payment of $2,258. If we buy a house hypothetically right now at today's rates of 6.7%, Loan amount of $350,000, our payment's $2,228, okay? Y'all see that? So what I'm going to do is, let's take the loan amount. Let's say we wait, okay? We wait one year. Let's say value goes up 5%. Oh my gosh, Travis, you were so wrong. Values went up 5%. You led people astray, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, let's hypothetically say interest, they go up 5%. So what I'm going to do is multiply this by 1.05, which will give us the new loan amount of 367,500. So do y'all see what I'm saying? I'm trying to be fair, okay? I'm trying to say, oh, I'm wrong about everything. Home value is just gonna keep going up, all right? See how I'm playing devil's advocate here? See how I'm playing devil's advocate here, y'all? 367,000, let's put that in here. 367,500, okay? Now, let's change the interest rate. We're gonna change the interest rate, y'all, back down to 3.75. Why are we using 3.75? We're using 3.75 because those were the interest rates before COVID. This is just a hypothetical, okay? So we're going to use 3.75. When the when they pivot, what do you think they're going to drop the rates down to? I'm hoping they'll keep them in the 5%. I don't know if they will. But let's put 3.75 here. And I want you guys to look at this, okay? Remember, the last payment was $2,258. If you guys wait for the pivot and rates come back down to what they were before COVID, that brings our payments down. Look at this, 1702, okay? Do y'all see what I'm saying? So if we wait for the pivot, rates go down into the 3.75%. Even if home value goes up 5%, look at the mortgage payment. And I know I'm, I'm saying this is just something I'm adding to your all's toolbox. Obviously, there's a lot of other things to talk about, but I'm just talking about a potential pivot and what that could look like, okay? So let's do the math, guys. All right, let's do the math. Let's do the comparison. So we know the first payment was $2,258. If we waited for the pivot, got a 3.75, our payments would be 1702. That's a monthly difference of $556 times that by 12. And I'm not done, y'all. I'm not done. This is just, there's more savings than this, but I'm just showing you in one year's time. Do y'all see this? In one year's time, we will have saved in just one year, $6,600. Okay. In just one year. But now the question is this. Okay. A lot of people are told, what are a lot of people told? You can refinance, right? A lot of people are, oh, you can refinance. Uh, what is it? Uh, date the rate, marry the house, or I don't know. It's some, some garbage like that. So I just showed you by waiting for a pivot, pivot, potentially you could save up to, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars a month. However, say you still bought 
okay? And you bought at $350,000 and you just want to refinance. I want to tell you guys and I want to remind you guys by refinancing, the reality of refinancing is a few things. First of all, you re-amortize your entire loan. So if you refinance your mortgage, which you should reluctantly refinance, you shouldn't just refinance, you have to start the entire term all over again. And you have to pay closing costs. You got, so you have to pay closing costs and you have to re-amortize the entire loan again. And the way that mortgages works is it's front loaded with interest. So let's see how much money y'all, let's see how much more money that we would have saved. Um, because let's say in the scenario at the $350,000, House, let's say they want to refinance into a 3.75, okay? This is what we do. So we know that the original payment, let's put this back in here, 6.7, okay? So we're back at that original payment, but remember, most of, we're gonna, we're gonna refinance, so we have to start all the way over again, which means all of the payments for the first year were a waste, okay? They're a waste. And remember, most of the payment goes to paying the interest for the first five years. So let me be graceful and say, mm, let's say 90% of that payment uh, goes to interest. It's going to be a lot more, but let's just say 90%. Okay, so 90% is going towards interest. That means $2,000 is being wasted per month. Let's times that by 12, 24 grand. Okay, so by refinancing, this person would have wasted $24,000 in interest because they re-amortized their loan. So when we add the 24,000 to the 6,000, it was actually like 6,600. Look at that. This is hypothetical, of course, but do y'all see what we did here? $31,000 difference. Meanwhile, how much was the difference in home? 16,000. Y'all, y'all tracking with me on that? Please let me know that that made sense. So this is what I'm saying. Okay. Even if home values go up 5%, if we wait for the pivot, if rates go down, we still are winners. Even if someone bought a house and they decide to refinance into a lower rate, they still wasted all of the interest payments the entire first or second year, however long they've been paying it. So refinancing isn't the magical solution that so many people think it is. How do I know that? I've been doing refinance loans for 21 years. I look at amortization schedules all the time. I know how it's front loaded with interest. So again, I'm just talking about interest rates. We've been talking about prices for a substantial period of time, but I also wanted to shed light on a potential pivot and how financially it can make a ton of sense for, you know, to wait for the pivot alone, just that alone. Do y'all see what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all, does that make sense? Let me get back over here. Y'all, will y'all comment? Let me know if that makes sense. That makes sense. So even if property values go up 16,000, you're still going to save around 31,000 potentially just interest. Again, I'm just giving you guys more ammo, just another way to look at things, right? Because, you know, again, most people finance a house. That's a fact. Most people do finance, right? So I hope all that made sense to you guys. Let's move on to the next thing, which is the open door. We're going to go over open door now and really all of the open door stuff right now. I really appreciate you guys. I just wanted to make sure that made sense. Oh my gosh, Johnny, please, please. Are you really confused, Johnny? I hope you're not confused. Watch it again, man. All I'm saying is, is interest is extremely powerful and so are the way that mortgages are amortized, right? Mortgages are amortized front loaded with interest. Anytime you refinance, you start the amortization schedule all over again. So it's very dangerous to refinance, right? You have to refinance smart. You have to do it smart, right? So that's the point I'm trying to make here. Let's go on to Open Door. Now, a couple of things with Open Door, you guys. Now, Open Door is a it was a big company, huge company in the United States. Open Door was actually uh, designed like an algorithm to purchase houses. So Open Door was purchasing houses from people and then they would flip the houses. So they actually started a, comp a flipping company, right? Really big company, uh, started a flipping company. Uh, unfortunately, you guys, you know, obviously now that the market is broken, that counts out of the bag, they are suffering drastically. And, you know, that's just open door. I am also saying that there are in a plethora of additional flip investors that are getting wrecked. And another thing that we're not, we're going to talk about towards the end of this, you guys, is the credit tightening. We haven't even talked about the credit tightening yet, right? Because we really haven't seen that yet. We, we still really haven't seen, am I out of focus? We really haven't seen the credit tightening. So let's go in this article now, y'all. Okay. This is the article on Open Door. So, online US real estate firm Open Door 
cuts 22% of workforce. So it's just not going good for Open Door, right? Let's read a little bit more about this. Open Door Technologies on Tuesday, so was that two days ago, said said it was cutting roughly 560 jobs or 22% of the workforce at the online U.S. real estate forum, citing a declining housing market. The announcement followed previous rounds of layoffs in November when the San Francisco company cut 550 jobs or about 18% of its workforce at that time. So this is a second round of layoffs. Obviously, what that spelling out is they're not doing good. And we'll go into that as we continue here. We're, we're taking these actions now to better align our operation costs with the anticipated near-term market opportunity, which means they're basically saying there's it's not going to be good in the housing market. Things are going to get worse in the housing market. You can look at that as we want to look at it as the prices. Obviously, they're getting crippled, not necessarily. Well, obviously, as the prices, they would be doing really well right now if prices were still going up. So the fact that prices aren't still going up is crippling them. Um, but anyways, you guys, the company said, obviously, the company said in an email confirming the layoffs, Open Door said new listings have fallen by around 30% from their peak in 2022, due in part uh, to the higher mortgage rates. Listen to the loss here. This is insane. Open Door reported a loss of 1.4 bill. How are they still in? How do you lose 1.4 billion and, and still are in business? I don't understand it. But anyways, Open Door reported a loss of 1.4 billion dollars in 2022, more than double, y'all, double its 662 million dollar loss in 2021. And what I'm wondering is, is how do you lose money in 2021? That was like the hottest housing market ever. How do you lose? $662 million as a flip investor in the hottest housing market in history. That, that's a, to me, that's a, system, that's a failure of their company and how it operates. Going into a little bit more here, Open Door uses artificial intelligence systems and other technologies to help it buy and price thousands of homes, aiming to flip, aiming to flip them within a few months for profit, for profit. It has been cutting prices for homes, for some homes, that have lingered longer on its balance sheets. And the company said it is reducing its market to, its marketing spending. At year end, Open Door has nearly, here's an interesting thing, 13,000 unsold homes out of 3,500 homes purchased in 2022, okay? So what's interesting is they still own 13,000 homes. That's down considerably. So they only have about one third of their inventory left. And let me ask you guys something. What happens, y'all, when they sell those 13,000 homes, what happens then? Do they just shut down their doors because they, they're a flipping business? So they have to flip, right? So what happens when they sell that? And I wanna make a point here, okay? New home builders. I've heard a couple comments and I would agree that new home builders are geniuses. New home builders are so smart. They're so smart, except in 08 and 09 when they lost their butts. They weren't so smart then, were they? No, they weren't. So I agree that Home builders are probably really, really smart. Here's the thing that people aren't considering to these genius home builders. They got rug pulled. Y'all, listen, the home builders got rug pulled. They were used to 1% and 2% interest rates. Now they're going to be experiencing much, much higher interest rates in a credit tightening environment. So, And not only that, <laughs> buying demand has been absolutely broken as a result of unaffordability. So <laughs> a lot of people are extremely smart, y'all, until they're not. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Let me show you guys the likelihood of bankruptcy for Open Door. Let's look at this real quick. Um, boom, 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 boom. Okay, so here is a basically a breakdown, y'all, of uh, interest expense and gross profit and the likelihood of bankruptcy for Open Door. So it's projected that the interest expense, this is insane, is going to be $415 million in 2023, and their profit is going to plummet down to $588 million. So how are they even making money? Anyways, after all of that done, this, this algorithm has actually calculated a 37% likelihood, you guys, that Open Door is going to go bankrupt this year. So they're saying 30% chance um, 30%, 37% chance. So basically almost a coin toss that Open Door is going to go bankrupt this year. Will they go bankrupt? We don't know. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. Okay. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. I don't know. So what I'm going to do now, you guys, is let's move on to the part. Um, let's listen to Kathy Woods here a little bit. 
And uh, I think it's interesting to get her perspective because she's starting to get freaked out. Kathy Woods is starting to get freaked out. Kathy Woods is a, you know, this, a lot of people say this one hit wonder uh, genius person. And she's been begging the Fed to stop. She's like, stop raising rates. Things are much worse. You don't have to do this. Inflation's going away. Hurrah, hurrah. Stop. You're hurting us. Stop it. So that's who she is, you guys. And um, I think it's interesting to listen again to some of the things that she is noticing that's going on as far as behind the scenes. Okay, so we're going to listen to that right now. Let me uh, do a timestamp real quick. So if you guys want to come back here, all right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute myself so y'all can hear this. I don't want any echoes here, okay? So we're going to start right here. Okay, we're going to start right here. Now the first thing is basically, I'm going to let you listen to this, guys, but she brings up some really intriguing points. The first clip is about 50 seconds. Let me make sure I'm muted. I'm going to mute myself so there's no echo. Okay, so you guys cannot hear. Let me try something else. All right, I'm gonna, I know what to do. Don't worry, I know what to do. Thank you for doing that. I know what to do, don't worry. Don't worry, y'all. I know exactly what to do here. Okay, we're gonna try this again. I'm really sorry about that, you guys. Super embarrassing. You guys should be able to hear now. Let me know that you can hear. Let's start over, okay? Comment that you can hear. We're gonna try this one more time, and this should work. I apologize for that. We should be rocking and rolling. Uh it does seem already that the commercial real estate space is uh, one of the victims. Uh, so this could be just a slow moving crisis, we don't know. Um, but getting into monetary policy, it could be a slow moving crisis, or are we talking about a hard landing? And I think, you know, the markets are a little bit on pause now trying to figure out uh, did the Fed and the FDIC come in and, you know, rescue the banking system uh, from from a run on the banks? Uh, so far, so good. But I do think the markets are stepping back and saying, is that all there is? What else could happen now? All right. So obviously, um, commercial real estate, she's already saying is a victim. Uh, so that's probably going to be the next black swan, you guys. I mean, it's an unraveling going on in commercial real estate. She's also saying that there's probably going to be a hard landing. So, wow, Kathy, I like, appreciate you. So she's saying a hard landing, but she's also saying, as the, you know, the market's trying to figure out, did the Fed just bail out the banking industry? <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, they did just bail out the banking industry. But I also like how she's pointing out like the market's trying to figure out what's going to happen next. Don't forget, you guys, we're still in this journey of quantitative tightening and raising of the interest rates. We have not been taken off the ride yet. There's still a lot happening in the background. That's what I was trying to tell you guys. But listen, let's listen to her mention fire sale prices now. OK, I'm going to put myself on mute. You guys show. Sure, let's listen to the next part of this. We only have two more clips. OK, here we are now. What happens? Um, surely there have to be some ramifications, economic ramifications. Um, and uh, we can see them now uh, in, in the commercial real estate market, which, which from what we're hearing is basically frozen. And we're, we're beginning to see more strategic defaults and uh, fire sale prices. Uh, uh, anecdotally. So uh, that's one area that we know is having problems. Why? Well, if you look at the loans to the commercial real estate market, uh, somewhere between 60 and 75 percent of them, depending on who's measuring, um, emanated from the regional banking system. Uh, so that's a problem. Uh
Okay. I'm going to take this off here. So a couple things, you guys. So I had a question here, like what does commercial real estate have to do with residential real estate? And uh, basically, you guys, credit tightening. Okay, that's what I really wanted to point out here. I mean, she hit some nails on the head there. She's basically saying right now, this is crazy. It's not even in mainstream media that there is fire selling going on right now in commercial real estate. Like it's unquestionable and that it's going to get worse. And again, credit tightening, credit tightening. If lenders are losing money like crazy, they're going to tighten up, right? So the more impacts like this that we have, the more credit tightening should happen. We still haven't really seen it necessarily, but credit tightening. The other thing is if these commercial investors, if they have to liquidate, right? A lot of these commercial investors have massive rental properties, single family rental developments, apartment developments, things of that nature. If they have to liquidate, if commercial real estate has to liquidate, that will not only, again, depending on who it is and how much inventory, that should do two things, lower potential, well, it should do three things, increased inventory, lower prices and lower prices on rent. But in order for that really to happen, it needs to be a massive systematic failure and basically we need to have a meltdown because this country is humongous, right? So those are the next boots on the ground, y'all, that I see happening. Obviously, the first one was um, bank runs. Big surprise there, right? Uh, as a result of the systematic failure of low interest rates. Uh, the next thing I'm seeing is uh, a commercial real estate. And then again, new home builders. The new home builders are still not out of the bag. Cats not out of the bag. But let's listen to this next thing, y'all. <clears throat> um, very, very interesting. Um, stuff here as well. And uh, let me put myself on mute and then we'll fill here. Uh, and now we know what it is. Um, is there a buy on the news or uh, a buy now that we're near the end of this? As I just mentioned, I'm not sure we're near the end of it. I don't know why deposits are going to flow back into the banking system uh, given current dynamics. Uh, but if we are um, about to experience, some people would say soft landing. I find it hard to believe this will be soft, uh, but soft or hard landing, what that will mean is inflation and interest rates are going to continue coming down and the Fed will follow them finally. Uh, the markets always lead the Fed. Uh, so that All right. So what do you all think? <clears throat> she she said something that really kind of hit me, actually. She said that the markets lead the Fed. She said that the Fed follows the markets. I think that's very interesting because that's we're, we're kind of seeing the market fight the Fed. We're seeing the market right now not believe what the Fed is saying. We're seeing the market. I believe they're not even I don't think the market's even pricing in a recession. So if that's true, you guys, that means that many people have are still going to get blindsided. So if people are going to get blindsided, essentially what that also means is it's going to feel like this systematic failures are going to feel like it happened overnight. Just like last time. And I want to I want to give you guys some caution here. OK, and then I'm going to wrap this up. All right. Remember where I'm from. Remember what happened to me. I started in real estate in 2002. I got my license 10 days after I turned 19. I wanted it by the age of 18. OK, so I was this prodigy. The first house that I flipped, I was 21 years old. I'm sorry, 20 years old. I couldn't even drink alcohol. Again, first home I owned was in Southern California. I flipped it before I could legally drink alcohol. OK, now it took me until the end of 2008 to fully understand. In 2008, I was in the business. I started in 2002, but it took me until the end of 2008 to fully understand and admit that we were even in a housing market crash. And the only reason I admitted it is I lost all my money. So in other words, I waited to the very end until the crash touched me before I could even comprehend that there was one that existed. And I look back and I'm like, man, why, how did I mess up so bad? What, what, you know, what was my line of thinking? Where was my mindset at? And the reality is you guys, is when there's hard things, you know, around the corner, people don't want to face it. And I think that's what happened to me when I was in my youth. I didn't want to face the reality. I was comfortable in my bubble and I didn't want to go out of my bubble until my bubble bursted. And here's the thing. Some markets right now, they're doing different things than other markets. Some markets appear to be rebounding and maybe it will rebound. Maybe things will continue to rebound. But all I'm saying is this, it's worth a wait. 
It's worth taking into consideration the things that are happening right now. Quantitative tightening, raising of interest rates, systematic failure, unaffordability. It's probably, all I'm saying, it's probably a good idea if we wait to some of these things shake out. Now, I showed you what a potential pivot could do. I showed you how it could be smart to wait for a pivot alone. And that's even if house prices go up another 5% this year. The reality is, is all of this emotion, all of these people are trying to get us to buy real estate with their emotions. It's the same thing. The difference is, is these days people are worse spenders than 08. Unfortunately, y'all, and this sucks. People are easily manipulated. Well, they were back then too, but people are easily manipulated and it really sucks. And I'm seeing right now, I'm seeing people continue to get manipulated, but I also want to say this, okay? Y'all have to do your own thinking. Y'all have to figure this out for yourself. I'm providing you clues, breadcrumbs, okay? But ultimately, I'm not about to sit here and say universally no one should buy a house because there's different reasons to buy. Could be health reasons, could be family reasons, could be tax reasons, 1031, retirement. Could be a million reasons, okay? But again, what I'm saying is, okay, I hope you guys get this. If you're like me, I'm frustrated. I'm a renter right now. I hate it. I'm going to be honest, you guys, I'm looking every single day. And what I'm going to do after this video is I'm going to go out uh, with my wife. We're going to take a little bit of a break today. I'm going to do videos outside and I'm going to take you guys to one of the houses that I have been looking at like crazy. The thing is, is I'm able to find houses that I love and I'm able to find deals that pencil out, but I still can't find them both. So I want you all to know I'm looking for real estate every single day, but I will not settle on my primary residence. I understand. And not only will I not, I mean, I won't settle on something that I like don't love, but I also won't settle on not getting a great deal. Y'all remember where we were at three years ago. Remember what a normal housing market looks like. Generally, these things are all temporary. So I really, you know, the toxic cheerleading you guys, and I'm not trying to pick on realtors. Um, <laughs> I've just been hearing it for 21 years. Y'all blame me. Y'all blame me for being impatient. Okay. I've been dealing with it for 21 years. I know the games, every, all of these people say the same thing, but what I really hope as far as the realtors that are, that do watch this channel is I hope that they're seeing how I'm accessing data, seeing how I'm using data to educate people, right? Instead of the cheerleading. So again, I want to tell you guys, let the data find the deal. Now, other than that, guys, I really appreciate you following along with me this morning. Uh, I may start doing, I'm, okay, so here's the thing, a couple announcements and then I'm out of here. First thing, Austin video is this evening. I'm dropping the Austin video this evening. I found homes that were listed for 30% under 2022 in Austin. 30% under. So I'm giving you guys the data. We're using the data. There's no question Austin's crashing. But is St. Louis crashing? No, nah, not by my definition of a crash. It's not. But has it started? Potentially, we need more months and weeks of decline, right? And right now we hit, we got hit with seasonality. Really amazing, actually. And I believe the seasonality is so strong because of excess savings, right? And emotion. Um, totally lost my train of thought. Totally lost my train of thought here. Dang it. Mm, I hate when I lose my train of thought. I love you guys, too. I love you guys, too. I lost, totally lost my train of thought. Um, anyways, guys, I'm going to go uh, I'm gonna go do some videos outside. I'm really trying to... Oh, here's the thing. So Austin video tonight. Watch the Austin video tonight. Second thing. And now I'm not 100% sure if I should do this. I need you guys to help me because I really want people to be cautious. But as we're being cautious, I also want to empower you and teach you how to buy, empower yourself, right? So I'm thinking this Friday at 8.30 a.m., I may, ha I may have a loan officer, a loan officer, Jennifer, who I love, come on to the show at 8.30 a.m. And we may do a first-time homebuyer thing or homebuyer thing where we're answering questions. So we may do a full Q&A on Friday morning. Uh, about, you know, financing and buying homes and stuff like that, like first time homebuyer programs, like the DTI, LP, I, all the underwriting, like what's going on in lending. So um, I hope you guys like that. Um, I'm going to try that this Friday. Let me know if you guys like that, you know, but other than that, I, you know, I just want to say everyone, especially, you know, everyone that's struggling right now, y'all hang in there. You're not alone. Okay. Hang in there. You're not alone. And you don't want to feel yucky about buying the biggest transaction of your life. I mean, y'all, it, it is what it is. And again, from the bottom of my heart, y'all, I'm struggling with you, okay? Just know that. You're not alone. I have a family. I have three children. I have a wife. <laughs> a lot of pressure, y'all. This is a lot of pressure, but I'm not going to settle, and I'm not going to put my family at risk, okay? And that's just my that's just my mindset. Now, I love you guys. 
you know, have a great day today. Look out for that video. Okay. That's dropping uh, today at what time is it dropping again? It's dropping at 4 PM. So watch out for that Austin video. Watch out for the morning, uh, the Friday live in the morning, if you want to catch that. And from the bottom of the heart, you guys, I love you. And if you're out there investing in real estate, you know, I hope you win.